Hello, welcome, and thank you for joining us for today's Feed Your Mind webinar. This webinar series is part of Age Friendly Arizona. We are a network of, communi of communities dedicated to helping older adults engage more fully and more meaningfully in their communities. Thank you for joining us. Um, this network is supported by partners statewide and beyond, including AARP Arizona, Virginia G. Piper Charitable Trust, and Grantmakers in Aging. If you should have any questions during today's webinar, please do post those in the chat box in the lower right-hand corner of your screen, and our speaker will address them throughout the webinar today. Our upcoming webinars include a presentation from Drina Kasari, Lyft General Manager for the Southwest Region, on Friday, September 7th at noon. Please do check www.connect60plus.com for news about upcoming webinars, as well as recordings of previously aired webinar presentations. Today's webinar will focus on how a local nonprofit agency, Northwest Valley Connect, works with Lyft and older adults to meet transportation needs. Joining me today is Kathy Chandler, Executive Director of the agency, as well as a partner of Age Friendly Arizona. Now, I'd like to, now I would like to introduce you to Kathy. Hi there. I'm Kathy Chandler with Northwest Valley Connect. Thank you very much. Northwest Valley Connect was started in 2014. Our two founding nonprofits are Benavia and Sun Health. They saw some issues with transportation gaps and service in the Northwest Valley and started uh, Northwest, Northwest Valley Connect as a um, to try to solve some of those gaps in service. Our startup grant was actually from Grantmakers in Aging with a partnership with Maricopa Association of Governments and we became a part of the Arizona Age Friendly Network. The start of our organization um, was to begin a call click connect center and connect folks who needed rides to the resources that were in the area already. We started with a website with uh, some resources in the area and then a call center. The call center is manned by volunteers in 2014, September, we started the call center, had 288 calls that first year. By uh, the end of 2017, the year 2017, we had more than 10,600 calls. Next, what we did was took the gaps in service and tried to find some transportation solutions. So we started the Ride Connect program with some volunteers who drove their own vehicles and we purchased a uh, umbrella coverage for insurance. And those drivers started driving seniors and people with disabilities in the West Valley to their doctor's appointments, shopping, and more. Then we started a group connect program, which was taking folks who needed to go grocery shopping or wanted to go to the mall, more seniors who were homebound and needed to really have some social trips. And we started taking people weekly to the area malls and, and to some events. A little, um, so to show you how the mobility center calls were coming in, our growth has been substantial. In 2016, we started getting phone calls from Goodyear, Avondale, and Tolleson and really spread across the West Valley of Phoenix. Our volunteers really started um, Picking up also, we did 656 trips in that first year that we had our insurance for our volunteer drivers. That was 2015. We did more than 8,000 trips in 2017. Our volunteers have grown to be about 35 volunteer drivers, still looking for more if anybody's interested. Our, um, we also applied for an accessible minivan and started transporting folks who needed that accessible vehicles, uh, accessible vehicle for their trips. We also applied for a larger vehicle so that we could take more people who wanted to go on those group trips. At this point in 2018, we have six vehicles, um, three actually donated. So Northwest Valley Connect's main purpose is to fill the gaps in service. We do that by referring first. We don't duplicate service but then also looking for more options to be able to fill those gaps in service. And the way that we've um, landed on doing those and the reason for this webinar 
is to talk about what we did for a taxi voucher program. In 2016, I applied for a grant for a taxi voucher program um, for 10 years before I moved down and took the job at Northwest Valley Connect. I was the mobility manager and paratransit manager in Flagstaff. In Flagstaff, I put together a taxi voucher program using paper vouchers and contracting with all the taxi companies in Flagstaff. So I looked at that first. There were some challenges to that um, in in how we contracted with the taxi drivers and in the management of those paper vouchers there were some situations where um, people were using more than one voucher with the taxi company it was hard to manage any fraud or any um, situations where people were really trying to use more than what they should be using with the guidelines so i looked at those first Card readers are new to the program. I didn't have a, such a program in Flagstaff, but looked at how taxi companies could use a card reader and we could manage those issues in that circumstance. Again, it's a costly program. So then I started looking at Uber and Lyft. Um, with Lyft, we had more of the accounting issues. We had um, we don't have to worry about contracts. So really dug into what we could do as far as subsidy or using a full cost on a program. And we had a couple of the Uber folks come out and give us a demo of their new Uber Central program. They have an Uber Business program and an Uber Central program. And this is what the page looks like when you're going to book a trip for somebody else. It's a third party program. So what that means is um, our seniors would not have to have a smartphone and be able to click into an app on their smartphone. They actually could call us and we use this page to book them a trip. We set up an account so that we had uh, a credit card for the charges because with Uber and Lyft, you have to have a credit card on file. So we had a special account that was just for that. And what we ended up doing was getting a um, a grant from the Sun City West Foundation to pay for some low income trips. So we didn't have to worry about any more of accounting than having those trips be paid for through our account that we put the funding from Sun City West Foundation in. The way that you book a ride is you, you put a person's name, their phone number. It's best if they do have a cell phone, but we actually have clients who don't and we put in their home phone. The driver for Uber or Lyft texts or calls that phone to let them know when they're coming. If there's any issue with those calls or those trips, we also get a report where we can look at the map, we can look at the actual route that the customer, that the um, driver takes to pick up the client and drop them off. We can watch that actually while they're taking a ride, just like you can if you are booking your trip on your phone. It's pretty cool. Um, we can look ahead of time to see how much the ride is going to cost. We can limit the area that we go to to limit the cost since this is a, a funded through a grant program. What Uber allows us to do is to put a trip in and we can put it in as a draft. And then you have to be watching the time that the client has requested. You have to hit that that trip is activated. Or you can put it in exactly when the trip is asked for. So what it doesn't have a provision for is tripping, booking trips ahead of time. We have some trips and some clients that actually go to dialysis at 4.30 in the morning. So this wasn't working as well for us since we have staff only in eight to five. Our Uber contact is by Nugent and um, this is his contact information. But I'd like to go into Lyft and, and some of the differences between Lyft and the Uber program. We actually use the Lyft program more 
and it's because it is more convenient, it's more user friendly, and actually the the lift uh, contact for us is much more responsive. In 2017, um, we started providing some of the dial a ride in the city trips for El Mirage, for the city of El Mirage. We started doing that with the Lyft program. Um, what Lyft offers us is an option to be able to book a trip seven days in advance, which is very appealing. The way to book a trip for Lyft is that you have this logon that connects you right into their, their web page that is your account web page. And then the trip booking page looks like this. On the top is an, a request a trip button. And then you can see just to the right of the column that is the, that are the trips that are already booked. And that's where the information is, is put in for a, a customer's trip. So you put a name, first name, last name, and a cell phone number. Again, you can use a home number. So if some if we have seniors that don't use a cell phone, we can put the home number in. They're just not connected anywhere near as well. And it really does make a difference, especially in the summer, because seniors don't want to be waiting outside for a ride or watching for the ride. It does matter if a driver can text them and let them know when they're going to be there. So when you start putting in the address, this is a geocoded field, which means that you can start putting in the address and it'll come up with a number of different addresses that have matches for the start. And you click the right one. And you do that for the destination also. Then there is a leave now button. If you push that drop down, it actually has a calendar with seven days out that you can use for booking a trip. So you can book seven days out. Then it comes with a drop down that also gives you the time of the day that you're booking. One of the new features that Lyft put in, and we think that part of the reason that they put this in, this was one of our requests, we didn't have a way to give any direction or any communication to the driver about the clients that they're picking up. We had, um, we had drivers for Lyft picking up seniors to take them to the senior center in El Mirage. And the daughter of one of our seniors called us and said, you know, my mom's getting picked up by this guy in a truck and it, it, I'm gonna have to lift her to get her in the truck. It really doesn't work very well. And so we started trying to put notes in, like anywhere we could figure out the driver might get them. So we were putting them in the, in the client's name field, um, just trying to do anything that would help in this circumstance. And Lyft put this new, this new um, space in for notes that go directly to the driver, which has really been wonderful. They also have a space for notes that are internal notes. So we use this for the Sun City West Low Income Program. We use this for the El Mirage Program. We can designate that in our internal notes so that the accountant knows which account this goes to. It's been very helpful. When, the, um, when we book the trip, the client, the cell phone number that we put in there, gets a text automatically that says that they have a book, a booked trip for the time and the day that it's booked for. So we typically try to do them all on the same day during the week, unless it's a trip for the next day or two days out. And so that the, the client knows they're going to get these texts and that their trips are booked. We actually have clients that will call us and say, hey, I didn't get a text. Are you sure you booked my trip? So that's another way of communicating that they know what's going on. It's, it's really nice that they get the text that says your driver will be there in five minutes and what color the car is that they're looking for. It makes them more comfortable with their ride. We have not had any issues with, um, with clients being uncomfortable with their drivers or uh, the vehicle that they were riding and we've had no complaints in the year that we've been, year and a half that we've been doing this, we've had no issues in that direction, which I'm very thankful for. 
Some issues that we have had, though, that I'd like to tell you about are that there are um, this, wrong page. this app, this will show you we've actually had a, a booked trip and it clicks in about 15 minutes before the time of the trip. So if I booked it seven days out at 4.30, it would click in at, at 4.15. Then what has happened is, in a couple of cases, it says that there are no drivers available. If it's 4.15 in the morning, again, there's not somebody in the office to be able to deal with that. We would be able to just go ahead and rebook it, and then the system sends it back out for other drivers to take a look and see if they can get another driver. Um, but if there's not somebody in the office manning the office and monitoring the program, that's an issue. Drivers sometimes can cancel for no reason. In that case, when we're monitoring the system, we just rebook the trip and it's not an issue. Drivers also cancel if they can't find a rider. If they can't find a rider and they've been there for five minutes and they've texted the driver and not gotten any response, they charge $10 for a trip. Sometimes we have to find out what happened in those cases. If the rider's in the house and not paying attention, they get charged for the trip. If the rider, if the dr um, driver is not in the correct place, we can look at where it's geocoded as a destination or as a when they arrived at the pickup um, geocoded space, and we can see sometimes that they might not be in the exact right way, place. Um, it doesn't happen very frequent, and the maps are being up updated on a regular basis, but that has happened. Sometimes riders, riders decide not to take the trip and just let the driver know, and then they don't tell us ahead of time. Those are some cancels that we see. Trips that are booked outside business hours aren't monitored. Again, that's an issue that would be something to look at if you wanted to use such a program. Drivers every once in a while forget to hit that they arrived at a destination, they let the client out, they continue on their way, they go from El Mirage all the way down to Glendale or into Phoenix, and uh, the trip comes back at a really high cost. We can contest those and the support folks um, go ahead and, and review, and they can see exactly what happens still on their computer system. So. Um, they just refund the amount of money that should be refunded to us. And that's not been an issue. Like I said, the, the Lyft folks really have been very responsive and helpful in how to deal with those kinds of circumstances. There have been times when a driver has taken just really a strange route to deliver their client. And those also are trips that we can contest. Recently, we've had some pickups where the driver takes the trip and, and the driver, it says that the driver won't arrive for 40 minutes. Um, if, especially since most of our trips are medical trips, that amount of time to wait for the, uh, the Lyft driver and then to get to their appointment, they would be late. In those cases, we also cancel the trip and rebook it and we have not had any issue with those being picked up and, and a whole lot quicker. Uh, I think there's just some times of the day that are busy and there are also events in town. And when there are events going on, it's harder to get a Lyft driver. Just like it would be a taxi driver, I think. If the driver determines that they're going to cancel a trip for whatever reason, the driver also has the ability to determine if they're going to cancel with zero charge, cancel with $5 charge, or cancel with a $10 charge. And those charges are determined, um, they determine what responsibility is the client's. So if, if they are really late, if they're taking, if the driver is taking full responsibility, they don't charge us and it's a cancel with a zero charge. If they determine that part of the reason, it, part of the responsibility is the client's responsibility. For instance, we've had um, folks that have been sick 
and when the driver gets there, they say, I just really don't feel like I can go today. And we've had drivers cancel with a $5 charge. If um, the driver has done everything that they can do to find the client that they're picking up and they just haven't been able to contact them or pick them up, then uh, they charge the whole $10 charge. And drivers, I'd like to say though that the drivers that we've had on Lyft have all been really very nice and drivers are people just like in, in any other circumstance, you have some that are very caring and helpful and go way above and beyond. And I'd like to tell you a story about one. Uh, we had a senior, uh, Edith, who goes from home to the senior center and the driver went to pick her up on a Monday uh, just like normal, we have her scheduled Monday through Friday at 9 o'clock in the morning, and the driver took her over to the senior center. And when she arrived at the senior center, the um, there were no cars in the parking lot. It looked like the senior center was closed. So uh, the driver, seeing that, called the phone number that was in, in her booking. The phone number was her daughter's phone number. And so when she got her daughter on the phone, she said, there's nobody here. What would you like me to do? Her daughter then remembered that she had gotten a note that the senior center was closed for staff trainings on this day. So um, the daughter asked the driver if she would please just bring her straight back home. The driver did bring her home, but she also sat and waited with Edith until her daughter showed up and did not leave her alone. She went way above and beyond. And what we find is a lot a lot of the drivers are very kind in that manner. It's, it's um, not any different than having a good taxi driver or shuttle driver that really uh, cares about the clients that they're transporting. We even have a uh, Lyft driver who came in and, and is volunteering as a volunteer driver with our organization. So it's been really a great um, partnership with Lyft. Our Lyft contact is Neep. He's been terrific. Um, there will be a video that we uh, will put on the Connect 60 Plus website along with the, with the PowerPoint presentation when it's posted there. So I'd like to answer any questions I can. So maybe just maybe add a little bit more about our accounting. Um, with the Lyft program that we have with El Mirage and with the Sun City West Foundation, what we do is pull the, um, the accounting program from the Lyft app. And it really is very intuitive, very easy to use. If you used this kind of a program and build the clients, you would easily be able to pull the trips that they took and the amount that they spent on those trips. Um, and they work really well with us. So, What I would say is the biggest impact that, that this program has had on us is it, it's given us the ability to provide more service. The, we have volunteer drivers, a limited number of volunteer drivers, a limited number of accessible vehicles. There's an awful lot of people in the West Valley that need rides. The Lyft program has opened the door to being able to provide, um, I think, more than 2,000 rides last year just using Lyft alone. It's given us the ability to be quicker on being able to provide those rides. We can do a same-day service, a same-day trip, where we might not have a volunteer available for those rides. All we have to do is, is book it into the Lyft program. It's taken care of. It's uh, it's been just an eye-opener for technology. It's been um, a, a wonderful program for really opening up that ability to do more service. So thank you very much for being here.
Have a nice day. Thank you very much, Kathy. That concludes our webinar for today. If you have any questions, please do feel free to reach out to Kathy directly. And if you um, have any questions about Age Friendly Arizona, please do feel free to reach out to us as well here at the MAG office. You can always reach us at 602-254-6300. Again, thank you so very much for joining us today. That concludes our presentation. We look forward to seeing you during our September 7th webinar with Drana Kasari, and she is the um, she's with Lyft as well for the Southwest region. Um, again, have a safe summer. We'll see you in the fall. Thank you.